Okay, so let's take a second and talk about the people of God, all right? Let's talk for a moment about people that are Christians, they're baptized, they're not going into holy orders, and the majority of people don't. And um, I really want to emphasize that that's entirely appropriate and okay. I'm saying that because there are some people that believe they can't serve the Lord unless they have been ordained, and that's just not true. As a matter of fact, your baptism and then your confirmation by the bishop is your authorization to minister, to share the gospel, to talk about Jesus where you are and whether wherever you are on the map. That's what you're supposed to be doing, okay? When the bishop, when you were baptized, you, you, you made the pledge, you took the oath to renounce the world, the flesh, and the devil, that you believed in God, the Father Almighty. You believed in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. You believed in the Holy Spirit and the resurrection of the dead. You know, so you renounced the fallen world. You, you were born into the new life in Christ. You received the laying on of hands. You're fed Christ in the Eucharist. You're equipped by the word and by the sacrament to go and to do all that the Lord has called you to do. In Christian history, there have been these things called suborders. Um, closest approximation today is sort of like staff pastors, staff at a church that's outside of uh, um, churches that don't have bishops, priests, and deacons, outside of the historic succession. That You see this like uh, the pastor of outreach or the pastor of healing prayer or the pa you know, pastor gets used in a lot of ways today to just mean somebody that's in charge of something in many churches okay uh, not denigrating that but that's that's kind of how the term is used in christian history you had these things called suborders suborders were specific functions that required skill and spiritual gifting by the people that were performing them or or more ministering them and the bishop would lay his hand or the priest depending upon what it is would lay their hands upon that person to pray for them, to set them aside for that work, to appoint them to it, but it wasn't considered holy orders. Well, here's some examples. Reader, because remember, for a long time, up until recent history, as far as history goes, most people couldn't read. And so readers were appointed with the laying on of hands to read the scripture to the church, and that's a ministry. It's kind of hard for us to grasp that, when we've got more Bibles on our shelves than, than most people in the world uh, today one have or have ever had in history. The scripture is sacred, so we shouldn't treat it as just a devotional text that we occasionally get around to or a magic pill that we can memorize certain verses on. No, it's a sacred, holy text. To hear the scripture read in the words of St. Jerome is like having the body and blood of Christ poured into your ear sacramental work so uh, there were readers and readers actually kept the copies of scripture very often you had readers you had uh, the acolytes who were servants to the deacons you had subdeacons who were like the deacons assistants you had deaconesses who were uh, women who were or appointed to do the catechizing and the and, and like women's ministries kinds of things um, that exist in many churches today deaconesses did that you have uh exorcists you had people who were specifically given the ministry of exorcism and the bishop shared with them the holy oil, uh, the, the, the process and, and how they were going to do that in the church. And you have others like uh, doorkeepers, porters, um, which may sound small, but it's a big deal if it's illegal to meet. you got to have somebody watching the door to give the church warning that there's an invading government power. Okay, So you have all these suborders that are really important. Today, we have staff pastors who are, aren't ordained, or we have uh, lay leaders who are appointed. You don't have to be in an appointed position to be effective in God's kingdom. You're baptized. You're confirmed. You've been gifted and graced, marked by the Holy Spirit for specific tasks and work. Some of it may be missions work. You don't need to be a priest or a deacon or a bishop to share Jesus around the world. And today, with the way we have the internet set up, you can do that kindly and politely, although you may want to avoid some, some settings and topics because of just the, the unnecessary conflict it can create. But the Spirit is upon the whole church. He's on you already. He's dwelling in you already if you've been baptized and confirmed. And He's marked out for you a ministry.
step into it. So in your local parish, talk to the deacons, talk to the priests, talk to your bishop when he's around. Pray, discern, get the mind of God with people in your church. Maybe he's calling you into a more focused life of intercession. Maybe he is calling you into some kind of sub-order category, however that's labeled and defined in your congregation. Maybe he's calling you into to religious orders like a monk or a nun. Maybe he's giving you the awesome task of being a parent, of being a mom or a dad, working a regular job, paying your boring taxes, and being radically faithful to your local church. Because I can tell you that without the church, without the people of God, there's no suborders. There's no ordained ministry. What, what is a deacon or a priest or a bishop if there's no church? So I just want to share that with you. Um, and just believe the Lord. Step into what he's calling you into. Discern that with your local leadership and move forward with confidence that the Lord will direct you. In the Anglican Church, we have a radical affirmation of those that are called into those prophetic ministries of exhortation, of preaching, of teaching, of disciple-making, of, of catechizing, of evangelizing, of just of giving and serving the poor that aren't ordained and are, that are not in religious orders. We obviously affirm all of those, and we want all of those to be those those embodied representatives to the church to see here's an ideal here's something that christ is calling us towards yeah right that's all good but don't let the fact that you're not ordained or you don't have a position keep you from doing the good that is set before you may the lord bless you and keep you and send you on whatever mission he has prepared for you from the foundation of the world